بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصل اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلا علی وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was the best of examples, alayhi salatu wa sallam, used to make tawbah to Allah and used to make istighfar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, more than 100 times a day. We don't even begin to come close to that. And our sins are like the sea itself and we go about our daily lives and we continue to commit sins and we barely make istighfar and we barely even make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remember Allah even in the holy month of Ramadan wallahu musta'an so what should we do about that I want to take a look at some of the different situations of people regarding toba and that toba requires certain conditions and some of the conditions of toba of returning to Allah of making repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that a person is determined to leave the sin determined to leave the sin that's one of the conditions for toba that they have sincerity and they're determined to leave the sin. Another condition for Toba is that the person feels sorrow. They feel sorrow in their heart that what they did was shameful and sinful and harmful to them, harmful to their iman, harmful to them in many ways you would, you would never, we would never, uh, we usually don't give thought to. How is that so? Because we know, and even in science we're beginning to understand the connection between the heart and the mind, or the, the, the body and the soul. That there's a connection. As they say, you are what you eat. That what you put into your body, it harms your body. The food that you eat, if it's cancerous, cancer causing, then the result will perhaps will be cancer. If it's a food which is has sickness in it, or poison, or what have you, it poisons your body. And likewise, when you're in that state of misery, sometimes the physical misery, sometimes it affects your heart. And verily, the heart affects the body. As the Prophet wasallam said, إِنَّ فِي جِزِدْ مُضْغَةٍ فَإِذَا صَلَحَ صَلَحَ جِزِدَ كُلُّ فَإِذَا فَسَدَ فَسَدَ جِزِدَ كُلُّ أَلَا وَهِيَ قَلْبٍ The Prophet wasallam said that verily in the body is a morsel of flesh. And if it is healthy, the whole body is healthy. If it is sick, the whole body is sick. Verily, it is the heart. So if your heart is spiritually sick, you will see how that affects you in other aspects of your life. Physically, mentally, and so forth. And think about this as a believer. When you know you're doing wrong, Especially if you're in a consistent sin, not that something you just fell into one time, but sometimes you fall into a situation where you happen to lie. More than one occasion, it, this particular situation comes upon you and you end up lying more than one time. You know, it happens. Or some people, they struggle with drugs and alcohol. They love Allah, but it's difficult for them to give up the bottle. It's difficult for them to give up the pipe. And it's difficult for them to move away from that, that sinfulness. And there's no doubt that that affects you. By putting that poison in your system, that affects your, your whole body and your mind. 
and the sorrow you feel as a believer, that affects your soul. So then you see how that whole, the whole uh, body, the whole human body in essence is affected and harmed by those sins. And definitely, if a person's heart is affected, no matter how big their body is and strong, no matter how much they jog every day, or they exercise on their bike, or they lift weights, or they do whatever they do, they swim. But if they have little Iman, and they feel the stress of sin, because sin is actually stressful. For the believer it is. Even for the non-believer, a lot of times you'll see when a person is in wicked sin, that all they're in is just sin, drunkenness, uh, all these other things. Aside from the, the, the wear and tear in their body, the wear and tear in the heart is heavy. They don't feel like a whole person. You see that, you can see it on their face. The stress, the anger, the need for relief, the need for spiritual growth and spiritual uh, relief. The need for taqwa la'azza especially the believer. So when a believer is engaged in those sins, whatever sin it may be, some people, again, they're tested by cheating. They have a love for money. And they just don't know how to manage themselves. That they always got, if they have a chance to steal or cheat someone, they'll do it. And they still love Islam. But they just have a difficulty beating their desires. And likewise, one of the biggest things, as, as the Prophet ﷺ said, Prophet ﷺ said, Fear the dunya, fear this life. You know, be, be cautious of this life. Because this life is enticing. The wealth, to have automobiles, to have wives, to have all the things of the dunya, the nice clothes, the nice houses, the nice boats, the whatever. That stuff can take you away from the remembrance of Allah and it can actually destroy you. And cause you so much stress that when you lose it, you kill yourself, as some people do. As many people do. They lose their wealth. You thought that they were the happiest person. But some trial, something, some trial befell them, and they killed themselves. What about all those people who put all of their trust in the dunya, and they worship the dunya? How many people are into various types of worship, even worshiping their shahwa, as Allah mentions? That they worship their desires, they take their desires as gods. And we see that literally people nowadays are into foot worship. They're into... B various types of bondage and beating and, and, and harming themselves. And they even call it and call it worship. Surihan. That they believe that Surihan. They believe that the end result is here. A dunya sijin of mu'min wa genital kafir. This life is the prison of the believer. And it is the paradise of the disbeliever. Because they can have everything they want here. They're only restricted by what their desires can have. Their stomach is full, now they'll stop eating. Or maybe they'll even cause themselves to vomit, as was the case with the Romans and as is the case with others. Cause themselves to vomit so they can put more food in, just for the sake of putting food in. They're never satisfied. And they're harming their soul. And they're harming themselves. The second part of that statement, the Prophet ﷺ said, Taqul dunya said, wa taqul nisa. He said, and fear the women. And I'm going to use this in the very general sense. For us as men, yes, we have to be cautious. Because that is probably one of the most severest things upon a man is a woman. That meaning that it, women can be the strength of a man or they can bring a man down. Because men from their nature are occupied often during a single day as they even study now in, 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 in science and, 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 and people who do research on these things that men are occupied daily perhaps by the every minute or every less than that with a thought about women 
some some relation, some way, unless they busy themselves with khair, of course, to deal with that. But it shows us that also it's our inclination. Our inclination is to love women and to be attracted to women, the opposite sex, as is the case with the women to beautify themselves for the men. They are attracted to the men. It's a natural inclination Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. But we have to not let that overrule us and destroy us. So getting back to the issue at hand, that all of those things related to sin, they require from us toba to come back to Allah. But we have to be determined to leave the sin. And we have to be sincere. And part of that sincerity is feeling sorrow. And removing ourselves from those environments where that sin is taking place. And that is one of the biggest dangers that we, we often encounter because sometimes some individuals, for example, I know individuals who have uh, written me and asked me about certain things related to pornography. I Even a particular individual wanted to come and study in one of the Marakas, marakas of Sunnah and he sent a question to me to ask the Sheikh and I asked the Sheikh, I said, Sheikh, so and so, uh, a particular brother wants to come here and study with you in Yemen, but he said he's tested with pornography. You know, what should he do? Should, should he allow that, that, that thing to prevent him from coming to seek the knowledge? And the sheikh said no. But he said he should take and strive to remove himself from that environment by taking the necessary steps. The knowing that if they're weak, they shouldn't go on the internet by themselves. And they should also, you know, put those passwords and those, those um, safety, electronic safety locks or what have you, to keep them away, you know, that block those websites. And they need to supervise themselves or be supervised in, in, in the company of people to protect themselves. So what it is, is you have some people, they love Allah, but they only meet one aspect of toba, and they don't complete their toba. Their toba is not toba to, uh, toba to nusuha. It is not a sincere and complete toba. So then it's not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not sufficient just to feel sorrow. Many of us feel sorrow if they have any iman. They feel sorrow if they've done zina. They feel sorrow, they feel they've destroyed themselves if they committed zina and they've done adultery and if they've masturbated or if they've watched something haram or listened to something haram or engaged in something haram or drank something haram. They feel sorrow as a believer. But... They haven't made toba, because it's not sufficient to make to be so, to be, feel sorrow feel sorrow, but yet you still have not made any st steps. You still have a profile on the internet. You still watch the same things on the internet. You you still have plans to go back to the internet, but you feel sorrow at that time. You want to remove yourself. That's not sufficient as toba. And you've made it so far. But ask Allah to help you with that. Another situation with regards to some of our brothers and sisters, what they're tested with, and may Allah forgive us and them and help us and them, is some people, they get so involved in the sin. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Rana ala that the, 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 the black spot is covering their heart. And the more they sin, the more it covers until it becomes a black dead heart, like a rock that you cannot penetrate. You can't penetrate this rock. And this is how the heart can be. So, the only way to clean that heart is by making toba and coming back to Allah and doing good deeds to erase those bad deeds and remove the ran, remove the that, that black filth that becomes on the heart. So, another individual is the one who is tested with their sins, but they are so involved in it, like their heart has like, become like the rock, to where they begin to think their sin is lawful. And that's why Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala said, al-ma'asi barid al-kufr, that sinfulness is the means to disbelief. 
Why? Because the per because because it, it, it is it's leading you in that direction is one thing. Number two, you can begin to think it's lawful because the shaitan comes to you in two ways with shubahat and shahwa with your with doubtfulness meaning bidah and kufr things related to your belief changing your aqidah changing you from the minhaj to the salaf to the minhaj of ahl bidah wa zandaka that's shubahat with doubtfulness getting you to leave the sunnah to go to kufr to become a non-muslim Say, oh no, I'm a Christian now. I'm a Jew now. I'm a Buddhist now. That's that's the, from the, the jihad to shubahat. That's from the angle of the doubtfulness. Reading things that you don't need to read and your iman is not strong and your elm is not strong, your knowledge is not strong, and it takes you. Look what happened to the the to Omar Lee and other people like that. Now, allegedly, he's come back to Islam, so I don't know. But that's an example. His situation is an example, and we know many examples. Personally, I know many examples in my community here of people who left Islam because they weren't grounded in Tawheed and the Shubahat got him. The second way the shaitan comes to you is through shahwa, uh, is through shahwa. And that is by your desires. Some people, they stay away from the Shubahat, but their desires, it's hard for them. As we mentioned, the man who's tested with the women or the woman who's tested with men and before Islam, maybe she, unfortunately, Akram al had many men. And she just can't live without a man. She's not married. She's struggling. She's striving. But she, she can't. She's still inclined towards men. So she has illicit relationships. billah. That just destroys her. And the point being, the shaitan comes from those two angles. And that when a heart becomes hard, sometimes the shubahat comes from the person with shahwa. Meaning that they make istihlal. They begin to believe that the haram is halal. So they begin watching, they begin, for example, doing the zina so much that they begin to think it's, it's, it's light because it's become regular in their life. They, do, they always, every, every night or every time they get lonely, they make that phone call. And then they meet the person and they have those relationships. They have a boyfriend, they have a girlfriend, they have whatever. And they have those illicit relationships. So much so they believe what they're doing is lawful. We're not hurting anybody else. We're not hurting anybody. This doesn't affect my iman. I'm still a Muslim. They begin to have a even the irja. They begin to believe that their iman is the same. Regardless of whether you're making hajj or umrah or salat or zina. All, we're all from Ahli Iman. This is how they, and we're all, our iman is the same. This is how they think. Those sins do not affect the iman. But that's a mistake. Sins affect the iman. It drags you down. And so, when they begin to think like that, and think that the halal and the haram are the same, and that the haram is halal, and the halal is haram, that's when they get into istihlal and can leave the religion of Islam entirely. So look at that, the shaitan got to them through their shahwa, and it led to the shubahat, to where it took them out of the fold of Islam. And that's the danger. That's the danger of continuing on in sin. And may Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, help us all, and bless us all, to be of those people who make sincere tawbah to him, and those people to have ikhlas with thabat ala sunnah, and tawakkal ala Allah, Tam, you know, complete tawakkal, complete trust in Allah, and be of those, the khashi'een, wa mutatahireen, wa sabireen, may Allah bless us to be of those who are patient, those who are pure, and those who fear Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and may Allah forgive us of all of our sins, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiyyana Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.